Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Amay. Samsung recently released stable One UI 3.0 OS update based on latest Android 11 for Galaxy S20 series devices. It was rolled out to US carriers first, and yesterday it started rolling out in some markets in Asia, including India. So I have it installed on my Galaxy S20 Plus here. So without wasting any time, let's see what's new and what are the changes and features. So make sure you watch the video till the end. For now, let's get started. Okay, first you can see One VR version is 3.0 and Android version is 11, which is the latest version for Android from Google. And as I mentioned earlier, Samsung Galaxy S20 series is the first Samsung phones to get it. Starting from the lock screen, you can notice the fingerprint sensor is bigger than before and there is a notification animation for that. There is also new face unlock animation around the corner as you can see. The bottom corner notification icons are changed as well but I have them disabled as I don't use them. It's good to have that bold and bigger fingerprint sensor prompt because it makes it quite easy to unlock. The notification bar looks different as well. They are separated as alerting notifications and silent notifications. When you pull it down, it goes all the way till the end and there is a nice transparency now as you can see. The icons that used to be here has been moved up top right and you can go to the edit button here where there is one new toggle called enhanced processing. It's easier now to directly add the toggles directly from this plus icon here instead of going all the way up there. Now the volume notification sliders are changed. They are much cleaner now. You can directly change the volumes from here. And when you click on this setting, it goes right into the volume settings. It is much easier for the one hand operation and of course there is that live caption button to enable and disable the captions for the videos on screen. One very nice visual change is the music control that has moved up to the notifications and you can access it directly from there. You can of course play pause everything from here but one interesting touch is if you have another music player running as well you can just toggle between them from notifications. It's quite handy. In call settings, you can see the new call background option has been added. From here, you can add a call background to see picture or video when you make or receive a call. You can also change the layout from there to display the names bigger or smaller as per your needs. You can now even choose a video from here and set it as a call background. You can also change it from different cards if you are using dual SIM. So for one card, you can choose this layout and for another one, you can choose different one. Also by pressing the plus icon that is there in the right hand top corner, you can even choose any image from your own gallery. How cool is that? Okay, we have already seen the notification panel and icons and here you can now by pressing plus button just drag and drop available toggles right here in the notification. Enhanced processing is, is nothing but high performance mode that you can enable it right away. As you can see it enables data processing for most demanded apps and games but it will also use the most battery of course. The good thing is now you don't have to wait for the processing to run as previously it used to. Even for the power saying mode, you can just tap on that and it gets enabled right away. You can go into the details and see all these options available right there that used to take 4 or 5 seconds to complete before. So it's really nice to see that delay is no longer there. Dark mode is really simple. You can just tap the toggle as usual, but now we can see that there is this nice transparency for the notification panel. Dark mode for wallpapers is now directly part of wallpaper section. 
and you can see the live preview of both the lock screen and the home screen wallpapers. And of course, you can schedule dark mode as per your convenience. Recent app screen has been changed as well and now you can see the nice animation and the main window is bigger than the other apps. Multitask window options are there and there is a really nice bouncing animation for all the open apps as you scroll them all to the end. One of the most needed feature was double tap. You can now go to advanced settings, motions and gestures and there is double tap to turn on screen and double tap to turn off screen option. So as it says you can turn on the screen when you double tap anywhere on the home screen and tap on the lock screen to turn it back on. Now if you look at the settings screen you can see the name right on top there and the whole settings menu is bold and arranged quite nicely. You can see that the widgets has been changed and it matches the theme. Also, if you right click on something, you have this new menu which provides much better actions that you can do directly from here. Also, now that we are on Instagram screen, make sure to follow my Instagram handle Ame underscore Sharma. Battery settings has a little bit of design overhaul as you can see the graphical representation and if you go to the more battery settings, you can see the enhanced processing has been added that we have already discussed. Now you can just press the app icon and see the widgets option there and from there you can see all the widgets available inside for that particular app and add it on home screen right from there. Settings search has been refined as well. If you search something it right away gives the option instead of keep searching for the menu which is really great because it used to be a hassle before. Speaking of widgets, you can have them on the lock screen as well and digital well-being here makes a lot of sense. If you click on the settings and unlock the phone, you go right away in the settings of all the available widgets that can be enabled here. Samsung's own gallery app has one useful change. Now you can revert back all the changes and go back to the original image. So for example, I am cropping this image as you can see and now I have saved it. Now it has replaced the original copy but if you want to revert it back you can just go to edit again and you see the option to revert and it has been saved like before. That's quite handy. For the camera you already had touch focus before but now you can lock the focus on the subject and change the brightness slider to get the right amount of exposure to the subject. Well that was it from my end. It's just great to see that Samsung is getting better at Android updates. One UI 3.0 is designed to help you focus on what really matters. So what are your thoughts on new features and on Samsung's approach of releasing OS updates to its mobile? Also if you have any questions related to One UI 3.0, feel free to ask them as well. And please like, comment and subscribe to my channel to grow. There are several interesting videos lined up in the Christmas and New Year holidays. So make sure you have pressed that bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. And last but most important thing, stay safe, take care and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.